What up, everybody? We are back to wrap up our month of OPD on enlisted perspectives. We're going to go through a quick run through of the SARM career progression, uh, admin duties and responsibilities, and uh, wrap up with a discussion about the first sergeant position. All right, for a quick breakdown of the one Charlie career field, you can see on the slide that, like everyone, they have their own pyramid. Apparently, the Air Force loves pyramids. So I'm going to quickly break down some of the skills requirements. Uh, I took them from the One Charlie Operations Resource Management, or M document, which does a good job of spelling out all this stuff. So three and five level training. All personnel entering the ORM specialty will complete the skill level resident training course, tech school. Uh, entry requirement for that is a high school diploma or equivalent. From there, upgrade training to the five skill level begins when they're assigned to their first duty station. For award of the five level, you have to successfully complete mandatory CDCs. What are CDCs? Great question. Uh, they are career development courses. Uh, I would loosely translate those to you as a more formalized crack book on crack. Uh, also complete all five skill level STS core task elements. What does STS mean? Another great question. Specialty Training Standard is a publication that describes an Air Force specialty in terms of tasks and knowledge that an airman can perform uh, to know the job. Uh, it identifies the training provided to achieve a 3, 5, or 7 skill level within a particular specialty, and it also serves as a contract between AETC and the functional user on um, overall training requirements that people get in formal schools. Roughly translated, uh, they're the skills someone has to have uh, based on a level of performance, like our grade sheets. Uh, third requirement for the five level, complete a minimum upgrade of 15 months, max of 21 months. Uh, knowledge at this level is uh, mandatory of uh, knowing rated, career enlisted advisor, non-rated, operational support, and parachute as duty classifications, uh, preparing, maintaining flight records, uh, air crew sorts, uh, flight and jump management policy, training qualification upgrade, uh, flying hour utilization, incentive pay, AF forms, the database structure, and how that interfaces with other automated systems. Also during this time, they'll do ALS uh, once they become a senior airman, completed 48 months of service, first re-enlistment, or when selected for staff sergeant. And completion of ALS is mandatory to, uh, to pin on staff sergeant. So seven level, you'll enter someone into seven level training upon selection of staff sergeant. Uh, to attain this skill level, you have to sew on staff sergeant, complete the requisite CDCs, complete the requisite STS core tasks, and level resident training, also 12 months of upgrade with a maximum of 24. Knowledge here, uh, AFWARMS, uh, air crew training policies and procedures, again, the AFWARMS database structure, statistical accounting systems, uh, statistical management and comparative analysis, techniques for collecting and presenting statistical data and analytical summaries, uh, written oral and visual presentation techniques, interface with other functional areas and their data systems. Uh, personal go to the NCO Academy in residence, after or assuming the rank of tech sergeant, prior to assuming master sergeant, they will have completed NCO Academy. So the nine skill level, when uh, that's awarded when you reach the rank of senior master sergeant, knowledge of organization and personnel management principles, management directives, technical orders, again, app forms, interface with other data systems, ORM coordination with maintenance, finance, and aerospace medicine offices, uh, completion of the Senior NCO Academy in residence is mandatory for award of the nine skill level. Like other career fields, there's other things at play like unit of assignment, staff assignments, broadening opportunities, etc. All right, admin, another pyramid. So the three alphas development is much like other career fields. So for time's sake, I just grabbed their duties and responsibilities from the uh, career field education and training plan. We don't have a ton of interaction with that office, but we should be aware of what they do. And hopefully Lieutenant Fry can fill in some gaps during the live session. Uh, first duty, office management. Uh, manage processes and activities to support organizational communication. 
includes preparing correspondence, distribution, suspense tracking, workflow management, QCing style and format, etc. Second, this is the big one we most regularly see, uh, provide administrative support for organizational personnel and manpower programs such as personnel rosters, evaluations, decorations, supervisory data, orders, in-processing, out-processing, and manpower authorization requests. Uh, third, executive support, so supporting GOs, SESs, uh, command chiefs, etc., coordinating with protocol for DVs. And last duty, postal and office mail, um, coordinating with the postal service and, and handling that. It's a lot of stuff, but like I said, the section on human resources is the one we most see day-to-day uh, -day in managing our personnel at the squadron level. Due to a binding endorsement contract that stipulates I mentioned Powerade at each OPD, I just want to say that Powerade is delicious and it cools you off on a hot summer day when you're out pounding the ramp. And we look forward to Powerade's release of Mystic Mountain Blueberry. Amen. All right, the first sergeant and maintenance. So uh, there's a whole AFI about the first sergeant. And I'll tell you, this is a demanding job to get into and to hold. I'll give you some high points from the AFI, but there is way more uh, than what time allows now. So give it a peek if you have a chance. So a quick description, uh, the U.S. Air Force First Sergeant is a leader serving in a time-honored special duty position. It's critical to the execution of the mission. Uh, they don't typically have a specific operational or, or technical expertise requirement but they need to thoroughly understand how decisions affect unit performance. Uh, they primarily support the mission through interaction, support, and management of airmen and their families. Uh, they have to ensure the force understands the commander's policies, goals, and objectives, and they have to ensure support agencies are responsive to the needs of unit personnel and their families. Uh, they respond to the needs of the unit members 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and at many times are required to work long and irregular hours. Uh, they remain vigilant and use the necessary authority to resolve issues that, left unchecked, would adversely impact unit readiness. They communicate with unit leadership, supervisors, and members to ensure equitably is maintained and morale, welfare, and the health needs of the force are met. They serve as the commander's advisor uh, on personnel programs, career enlisted progression, uh, enlisted PME, family needs, financial matters, housing, and recognition. Uh, they also ensure that leadership, including superintendents and supervisors, are actively engaged in the interaction support and management of airmen and their families. Uh, they epitomize the highest qualities of Air Force senior NCOs and maintain relationships with key leaders and key spouses. So the, the AFI 362113 uh, lists 26 roles and responsibilities. I boiled it down to uh, a few of the big ticket items for you. Um, exemplify and be thoroughly familiar with military standards. Be intimately familiar with the unit's mission and understand how the unit operates. Strive to know all airmen within their area of responsibility and stay attuned to their needs. For 222 of us, uh, be available to respond 24 hours a day, uh, serving as a key advisor to the commander on uh, all issues uh, that he deems appropriate. Uh, be reasonably available to airmen for counseling, mentor, mentoring, and advice. Uh, have a regular presence in the dormitory or uh, single first-term community housing, uh, doing morale visits, room inspections, and being attuned to the quality of life needs uh, of the dorm occupants and also work with housing management to ensure uh, quality in the environment. Also perform quality reviews of EPRs, awards, decorations, promotions, classifications, uh, disciplinary actions. Uh, the shirt has to engage in a personal fitness routine and maintain standards. Uh, ensure all members are prepared to deploy engage installation support agencies and serve as a liaison uh, between the commander unit members and those agencies. Uh, resolve problems and complaints at the lowest level and help people to do so and coordinate the resolution of complex problems with supervisor members and commanders and base agencies. 
ensure training is provided on matters of leadership, customs and courtesies, dress personal appearance, self-discipline, adherence to standards, and safety. Uh, correct conduct, prejudicial good order and discipline, uh, work with key spouses and strive to ensure the commander's program is successful, and also be directly available for needs of family members. So qualification, selection, education, duration. Uh, selection for first sergeant duty comes from the developmental special, special duty nomination process, which we touched on in OPD-1. Once selected, the member attends the first sergeant academy and serves a minimum of three years. As far as qualifications, again, there is a laundry list, but here's some high points. Uh, master Sergeant or Master Sergeant Select with 36 months of retainability. Uh, overall EPR rating of five uh, or have exceeded some expectations or exceeded most on their last three. No referrals in the last three years. Shirt has to speak distinctly, distinctly without any speech impediments. Uh, must not have or bear appearance of personal, marital, or family problems that would detract from their duties. Have to be financially stable. Uh, demonstrate exceptional leadership and managerial skills. Physical appearance and military image are paramount. They even assess tattoo placement for applicants. Uh, no record of unprofessional or inappropriate conduct, being good physical health. Uh, gotten at least a 280s or a 90 on the most uh, recent PT tests, uh, attended the Senior NCO Academy, had a CCAF degree, and possess a 7 or 9 skill level AFSC. It's a ton of stuff, and during the live discussion, I hope the shirt can cover aspects of his job from a practical standpoint. My goal here was to illustrate the importance of the position and how rigorous and demanding selection for and performance of the duty is. I put the maintenance tag on the slide since our first sergeant has that background, and hopefully we can learn a little bit about that field as well from him. So, your homework and wrap up. Edition Dirt with the Shirt, Thursday, 28 May at 10 local. Uh, please join us and uh, Sergeant Myers and think of questions you have about his unique position as well as questions you might have about enlisted career progression on the whole. Uh, leadership in general, his views on officership, the maintenance career field, or anything else. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this month's OPDs on enlisted perspectives. Uh, we're still working on June, so if you have ideas, throw them our way. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you soon.